How would you like to generate real estate leads for less than $2 a piece consistently? Well, today I share with you how that's possible today, tomorrow, and moving forward. And the great thing is you don't need to spend hours trying to figure it out. All you need is this one video. Hey, it's time it. If we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. All right, we're here in the ads manager where all of your advertising should be going down. If you're not running ads from this very screen, then you're probably boosting. And I'm gonna invite you to stop that because that's a great way to waste a lot of money. You wanna be running your ads from here because it gives you more flexibility, more control, and ultimately better results. And that's what you're after. So let's get going. We're gonna create an ad. All right, and right off the top, you have a campaign objective. Each one of these does something a little bit different. There are a little, there's a little bit of nuance between them, but primarily the campaigns that you're gonna find yourself running over and over again are gonna be a traffic campaign, a lead generation campaign, and then a messages campaign if you're into messenger bots and a conversions campaign. So to get things going, I do encourage you to run a lead generation campaign because it's the simplest form of launching ads or the simplest form to create ads, but we're not gonna go through that one today. We're gonna go through a traffic campaign. And the reason being is because this one gives you the most flexibility. So we're gonna keep it on the traffic campaign objective and we're gonna continue. And then when it comes to the name, I like to name it traffic and then any other type of, I'm sorry, any other distinguishing factor that's gonna happen in this campaign. So remember, you want to have your objective from the outset before you even create your campaign. You don't wanna get in here and just see, oh, well maybe this makes sense or this possibly could work. Have a strategy beforehand, have that objective ready to go. So this is gonna be a just listed campaign. All right, so we're here in the campaign level and I'm gonna leave it like that. That's really the only thing that I'm going to highlight because I want to carry this naming commission along the way so you'll see what it looks like. The special ad categories. If you're running credit, employment, housing, and now political ads, then you do wanna select the category that you're running. So you see credit, employment, housing, and now politics. Um, there are certain restrictions that you can um, that you can't select or you can't filter from this end of the spectrum. So from this end any longer. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a couple of seconds. So we're gonna run a housing ad, and we're gonna leave this in au auction because that's the only option. <laughs> we're gonna keep it at traffic, and then add uh, let's see A B split testing. We're not gonna do A B split testing but know that you can do that through here if you would like. But campaign budget uh, optimization. So campaign budget optimization means that you select how much you want to spend from your budget from the campaign level rather than the ad set level. In the future, Facebook is going to move to only giving you this option, so this right here, but they haven't done so as of this recording. So we're gonna continue using the budget from the ad set level. All right, and then going back to the naming convention, I am going to run a Zillow interest, a 15 mile Zillow interest. All right, so you can name it however you want, but I like to be very defined with the um, the naming uh, convention that I use. That way I can read through my reports rather quickly and I know my habits. You don't have to name it this way. This is just how I choose to do it. So I'm gonna copy that because I know I'm gonna use it over here at the ad level. So I can go to the ad level right now if I want, or I could go down here to the ad level there as well. So just know that. And the reason that I'm la labeling it the way that I am is traffic that speaks to the campaign that I'm running. So that way when I'm looking at my report, I see the type of campaign that I ran. And then 15 miles, which I know that's the default radius that I'm going to use. And Zillow is the interest that I'm going to select in this particular campaign. And just listed is a type of campaign. So left-hand side, campaign, I'm sorry, over here, just listed is a type of ad, uh, not campaign. Traffic is the campaign. And then this is the ad set, which is right in here. And then this is the type of ad. So that way I'm staying organized and I can easily read through my reports on what's working and what isn't. So I'm gonna copy this again 
traffic is going to be to the website. We're not driving traffic to an app or a messenger or to messenger or to WhatsApp. Dynamic creative. We're not going to worry about that, and we're also not going to worry about the offer. When it comes to the budget, I'm going to leave it at twenty dollars a day. That's fine. Start date is going to be now. I'm not going to select an end date because I'm going to come here every single day and optimize. And then here, custom audiences, I'm not pulling up an audience like a custom audience or a special lookalike audience or anything like that. Now, although you could, but just know that I'm not personally going to be doing that right now. Let me move myself down just a little bit. All right. And then the locations, I'm going to select people living in this location rather than people living and recently at this location because I want people that are in the area that I want to be in. So let's just go to Dallas today. And this is something that Facebook started doing. They used to zoom into your area, but now you have to zoom in manually, um, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it's also not the most convenient. So you see the radius a 15 mile, uh, 15 miles go. So the 50 mile radius is relatively large. You're talking about the entire Dallas area. And um, so when it comes to the special ad category, because remember, that's what we ran. If we're running a housing ad, we do have to select that it's a housing ad and no way around it. So there you have, you're limited with to a 15 mile radius. You are, you can't select between ages. You can't select between genders. You can select languages. So that's a good thing, but you're not able to select based off of demographics. So if you remember up here, I put Zillow. This is where that targeting is going to go. If somebody has an interest in Zillow, I'm able to select that. I'm able to only show that to an audience that has shown an interest in Zillow. And you can also narrow it down even more. So let's just say they wanted a Trulia. They were also in Trulia. And over here it went from 430 to 220. So I like that. That's fine. So let's just go up here and change it. Zuli, uh, Zulia. <laughs> Zillow and Trulia. I'll keep those together space i'll copy those now since i changed my mind and this goes completely against me having a strategy like i mentioned before but since this is educational purposes i think you'll forgive me hey one quick second i'll let you get right back to the video but i need a huge favor could you go over to facebook and find my real estate agent group specifically designed for real estate agents and ask to join it if you're not already a member once you are part of the group, I want you to find this video right here because chances are that I've already posted it there. Once you find this very video, I want you to click on it and get right back to this point in time and then smash that like button. If you were to leave automatic placements on, so this means where your ad is going to show, where on the screen, where on the mobile screen, where on the... Um, the platform, whether that's Facebook, whether that's Instagram, if you leave automatic placements, basically everything that's a checkbox right there is where your ad is going to show. We don't want that. We want to split test as much as we can and the placements is a place where we split test. So when running this campaign, I would split test between the news feeds in Facebook and the news feed in Instagram. So I would split test Newsfeed to newsfeed, so Facebook newsfeed and Instagram feed, and then I'll also split test Facebook story to Instagram story, and you can see that they added messenger story. So depending on when you watch this video, chances are that you're gonna see even more placements. Facebook and Instagram, which basically it's the same company, are finding more and more ways to advertise, more and more placements to place ads so you can continue spending money with them. All right, specific mobile devices. We're going to leave all mobile devices because that's where most of the consumption is happening from. We're not going to worry about the rest of these with the exception of the optimization for delivery at delivery. And we're going to go with landing page views. Right now it was link clicks. The reason that we're optimizing for landing page views is because you want to optimize for when the page actually loads. You don't want to optimize for these clicks because it could well happen that somebody clicks on it and immediately bounces out before your landing page even shows up. That's not the type of, of people that we're trying to optimize for. We're trying to optimize for the people that actually stay on our page at least long enough for our page to show up. So that's why we're doing that. All right, in cost control, I very rarely, very rarely will I ever put that there. I do know my numbers when it comes to the types of 
ads that I run in specific markets. Um, but I don't put I don't put a cost control because I'm here every single day and I know that I'm split testing a lot of uh, uh, interest and a lot of audiences at once. So it doesn't make sense for me to limit it in that sense. But if you are hard fast, I'm not going to spend more than five dollars per lead. Then you can put that there. All right. Now we're at the ad level. So this is where you actually input your ad. So I'm going to paste what I was carrying over traffic. 50 mile radius, Zillow and Trulia interest just listed. So notice that over here, I just put traffic just listed because that's the campaign and this is a type of ad. What's in between the ad set, I didn't know that until I got to the ad set. I didn't know that until I got this here. So whenever I'm split testing, that I am just gonna duplicate this right here and change the ad set. So as an example, if I was going to uh, split test this versus those people that were showing interest in real estate, then I would just copy this right here, copy the, from the ad set level, and then I would put um, real estate. I would copy that and I would make sure that it's right there at the ad set and it's also here at the ad level. But since I'm not gonna do that, I'll switch it back. But just so you know, that's how it happens. All right, so we're gonna scroll down. If you were advertising on Instagram, you can certainly up add your Instagram page there or link it up. But since we're not advertising it on Instagram, I'm not going to worry about that. Even if I was advertising on Instagram, I don't have to select that. I don't have to select my account anyway. All right, create an ad. I'm not going to worry about that format. So you have different formats just so you see them. Let's just say carousel. Uh, let me move myself even further down might take a little bit for it to load. So carousel, you can see it kind of has different cards there. So you can select those. And then collection, group of items that opens in a full screen mobile experience. So that's more on your mobile side of things. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna stick with a single image and we're not gonna worry about the ad instant experience. Although I do want you to split test that cause that is a unique little thing to experiment with. The media, we're gonna add an image. So ideally, this is gonna be a just listed ad or just listed campaign. So this would require having your own listing or a listing that you are uh, requesting permission or have requested permission to advertise. So I'm just gonna add an image so you see it. And to run any type of ad, you do need to have an image and you do need to have ad copy. The ad copy is gonna be right here. As you can see, primary text it will not allow you to go beyond this. I'm sorry, it, it will not allow you to confirm or actually try to launch the ad without a certain amount of text here, which will go right up there. So let me find that ad copy for us right now. So this is a template that you can use every time you take a property out to list, out to market. So here's what it looks like. So just listed, looking to move to blank and blank city. So you'd put that right there. And then the, your city, this is not a this is not a code or anything like that. It's not going to dynamically show up. It's just something that you do need to replace. So that's a play, uh, placeholder for you. Then you would put the number of beds, number of baths, number of garage and square footage right there. Get price address and pictures. If you happen to have a virtual tour, then add that there. I would just uh, put uh, get price address. Pictures and virtual tour. and virtual tour right there and you can also have that hyperlink you can also create a well let me show you let's just say you were going to put send them to your website whatever website that was www.website.com this is going to work great if you use your pixel this is going to work great if you use your squeeze page um, or have a place where only this Properties information is there. So a place where you can collect emails, that is where the lead generation actually comes in. So effectively, if it's on your website, make sure that you have a place to collect those emails and collect those phone numbers as well. But basically what most people do, and this is why, what I actually advise you to do is create a squeeze page or a landing page or a sales funnel, whatever you want to call it, but have a place where it's only 
uh, it's only there to get somebody's information. So it's going to be, hey, um, give us your information. It's going to be worded much better than this, but give us your information if you would like the additional details on this. And that's where as soon as somebody clicks through the ad, they're going to land on that landing page. They're going to submit their information and you're going to get the lead and they're going to receive the goodies. They're going to receive that right there. And then I'll show you what one actually looks like in a couple of seconds, but let's just finish this ad and then head over to the landing page. Just listed home in Dallas will go fast. All righty. So back to the link. Let's just say this was the URL link. What I would do, since it's most likely going to be a large one, I would put that URL into a bit.ly link, bitly.com. So go there to bitly.com. It's a, a link shortener website, which allows you to take a long URL and suppresses it to about eight, eight characters instead of 30 different characters. All right. So let's go and let me show you an example of a landing page. Okay. So this is an example of a landing page. Now, forgive me. I don't have the particular landing page ready to go when it comes to the just listed campaign, but I do have one when it comes to the list of a certain type of home in a city so this is what you're seeing right here again this is nothing fancy this is just a place for somebody to put their name their email and their phone number and then request whatever you are promising them so this landing page is promising a list of something whereas your ad was promising the additional details on the home that you just took to market so those are some small nuances but you can certainly take landing pages like this and convert them to whatever sales message you want. You can also create squeeze pages or individual single property websites, which do highlight the property, but require an opt-in. So there's many strategies that you can do to pull people's information. But the last thing you want to do is send somebody into the abyss, trying to figure it out on their own because you're spending money here. You want to convert it as quickly as possible and landing pages or squeeze pages, sales funnels, whatever you want to call them, are the best way to actually get your spending dollars in converted into actual leads. Well, now that we've gone through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to generate real estate leads using Facebook ads, it's time to level up. So I'll leave a video right here that's going to help you do that. Also, if you found value today, please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And of course, make it your best day yet.